This is the Effing One Podcast, Australia's only Formula One podcast with Adam and Luke. Sean Kelly, the F1 stat man, making, bringing back stats, making it cool again. You're the rock and roller of stats since 2003. Is that right? Is that when you started? You've been reading my Twitter account, haven't you? I did. Yes. I had a little sneak. Making stats a new you're, rock and roll since 2003. You're kind of a big deal. I'm kind of a big deal. I am a household name in my house. There we go. That yes. helps. And now with Effing One Podcast, you're and a household now name. now with Effing One, exactly. After we had our rather ridiculous conversation about putting Tim Tams on a front wing. Oh, cracking we, an egg on can it. Can we revisit that? Because is that a real thing? We were I discussing probably this. Probably should. We're re- making reference to a previous podcast now. Now, just to give some details about you, Sean, uh, you are F1 and en- Human Encyclopedia. You've been working here at the Australian Grand Prix. What do you like most about coming to Australia? Do you come here every year? And what do you love most? Uh, I haven't been, uh, this is the first time I've been in, in Melbourne since 2011 on site. I mean, I always work on, I work on every Grand Prix, but I'm not usually on site. I've, for the last few years, I've been working for NBC. So I've been locked away in a windowless TV studio in Stamford, Connecticut. Um, so it's good to be back. Um, I missed last year because of my, my green card application prevented me from traveling. I don't, all the plans were made. I was supposed to be here doing things and whatnot. And then suddenly I was like, nope, you can't travel. So it was a bit of a bummer. So you um, live in the States? I live in America, yeah. yeah. You've got um, your green card now. Yep. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. So it's ironically, after, what was it, 14 years working for the US TV broadcast, the Speed Channel, then NBC. Um, wow. That has now gone away because yep. our Sky Sports obviously provide their service to ESPN in the US. So there's no US broadcast production, yep. you know. Um, I just want to say there's a large man backing up. That's why that noise. There is, there is a large... That's a Williams being taken out of the uh, Yes, there is. The I can convert the live coverage of a forklift truck being driven a big, into sh- the paddock. We should just qualify, Sean. And uh, uh, we are actually sitting outside the Formula 1 paddock. So things are coming and going. I think uh, there's we still... Are, we are on the effing one podcast uh, uh, dais. That's right. right now. It's a little podium. We're sitting the about pagoda. a foot higher than yes. everyone else. Yes, we are. And there's are. a boxed head, Sean. And Would actually... You like that? And amazingly, listeners won't believe that that is actually true. This that is it true. genuinely is, is true. the case right now. We're it's sitting true. here watching everybody come and go yeah. from the paddock I'm in packing. our chairs. Yeah, it's quite a nice and relaxing. It is. I, I said, you should, I said yeah. why don't we take a photograph? Because no one will believe Can it. Can we take so a photo? We should. Let's take a Let's photograph. Let's take a photo. And we need the little, Wait, the, the think, little door so people yeah, can go. I think, go. Yeah, yeah, if you get out there, there we yeah, go. go. I'm going to come sit next to you, Sean. The stats man. Making stats cool again. Here we go. One, two, three. Look at that. And I'm, you know, pretty sure, Sean, we're going to see a Red Bull driver come past soon because there is a beautiful Aston Martin. Oh, here we go. Smile for Luke. There we go. Um, yeah, there's an Aston Martin parked out the front. Is that yours? Um, it's very sexy. No, it's the wrong colour. Maybe Max's. Yeah. But you get the pick and then Max gets second. Take exactly. Exactly. So you enjoy Australia? I love Australia. So you don't come to every Grand Prix around the... I don't go on site at every Grand Prix. I'm in a fortunate position of not having to do every single race right now. Um, I get to cherry pick. Although I, I work on each broadcast, I don't have to go This on is the other site. Williams just coming past now, sorry. The other Williams, there we go. What a, what a time to be alive oh, in Formula 1. Forklifts going back and forth. Yeah, we actually, uh, there, used to be a, there used to be a mechanic who worked for McLaren uh, who was nicknamed Forklift. <laughs> and we used to try and reference him on the air as much as we could whenever we saw him. <laughs> look, look, oh, Forklift, there he is. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what were we talking about? Oh, yes, we were talking about how yes. much we love Australia. Yes, and, we and do, I do love Australia. This is one that you handpick. So, which well, ones don't you want to go to? Um, which ones do you I, forget about? Shanghai is not a particularly appealing race. The paddock is absolutely cavernous. And, you know, is you it? don't. Yeah, I mean, it's like an airport terminal. Uh, right. It's just so gargantuan that you just you don't really get much cross pollination of people. You don't bump into people. Yeah. Uh, this tr- this paddock here in Albert Park is very small, so we're kind of piled in on top of each other, yeah. which makes it a much more enjoyable experience because you just h- happen upon each other. So the main you know? difference of the Melbourne Grand Prix is it's prettier, more accessible. It's a nicer. The air is clean. I don't know. <laughs> well, Compared to Shanghai, yeah. I mean, Shanghai would be pretty no. filthy. Um, I'm just just switch off my no, microphone. I don't think there. so. I think you're good. Sure. You're still hearing me. No, sure. We've got you loud and clear. Yeah. Um, no, uh, uh, on all counts, I mean, Australia is a great place to visit. I love Australia. Yeah. Um, long flight to get here, but it's worth it. Yeah. And, you know, I, I always say to people, anything you've ever heard about visiting Australia is true. Yeah, it takes ages to get there, and yeah, it's totally worth it once you do. Yeah. Um, organizationally, this is one of the best races of the year. It's so easy to get into the racetrack. I mean, I love. It. There's some people, you know, so many people in Formula One are all st- hung up on status. But if you just take the tram into this 
track you know, from downtown, yeah. from Southern Cross Station yeah. to yeah. here. It's so it's so convenient. You it's know, so yeah. easy to get in and out. Melbourne is pretty amazing like that. Like yeah, I mean, some are really good. some some races like Abu Dhabi, you know, oh. you park like in the middle of the desert. Yeah, well, it's, it, that wouldn't be a problem. Catch it's the fact camel. that the, the you know where you end up is like half a mile to where from where you're actually trying to get to. Yeah, and you got to walk. And you think with a Sherpa well, and a camel? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Um, you've got to go up dale, down dale, and through tunnels, up hills, and stuff. And you think, what the hell? You know, they did, I thought they built this place from scratch, and this is how they did it. But if you your know. Arabic was any better, you'd probably get a nicer camel. Perhaps <laughs> uh, that is part of my negotiations yeah. with the meetings I'm having this weekend. Uh, I've got to plan ahead. No, um, we have worst? got Bahrain next. Yeah, Bahrain. That's going yes. to be hot. Are you going to that one? I'm not doing Bahrain. No, no. at least no. Uh, unless you've heard otherwise. Uh, I'll no. be at home for that one. No. Um, now, let's talk about the Australian Grand Prix and what happened today. There were mm. some surprises, were there not? There were. Unfortunately, they were not at the front of the grid. No. Um, I mean, the surprise is Haas, I think, surprising everybody by being the best of the rest. I think everybody expected it to be Renault. Yes. And Renault were not so hot. It didn't make Q3. Um, yeah. I mean, Surprise. Yeah. I mean, Danny Ricciardo, you know, hometown hero, painted the place black and gold yeah. uh, or green and gold if he's got his commemorative hat. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, failed to make Q3 for the first time in Melbourne in the turbo hybrid era. Uh, it was a bit of a blow. for the, the home crowd. A it is. Bit. It, um, and I, the fact it, that he actually didn't uh, beat Hulkenberg at all in any, I don't think, testing, qualifying, or well, practice qualifying, he, mm. Hulkenberg was always in front of him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he only. I think there was only something like 5,000 difference in Q2 today, so it was very close. But I think just the overall pace of the Renault was a bit of a disappointment. Yeah. Um, with the Hogenberg thing, do you think it's more Hogenberg's more familiar with the car? Dan's still getting to grips with the car, or is no? Hogenberg actually, I think it's a regulation change that's helped it. Ah. Um, and I think it's the, the fact it's the weight, the fact that Hogenberg is a heavier driver, and now they've equalised the weights by saying driver plus seat plus overalls plus helmet must be 80 kilos, and if it's not, we'll bring it up to 80 kilos. Yep. Um, that has levelled the playing field for drivers like Hogenberg, and I think he's he. Uh, Going into this season, people thought, well, oh, you know, <laughs> Ricardo will wax him. Of course he will. But they didn't, I don't think they reckon on A, Hulkenberg is very good. Um, Sorry to interrupt. Ocon. And, uh, Bonjour, yes, Monsieur. Comment ça va? Yes. Excellent. Très bien. Right. I'll see you in the racing Esteban. point later Esteban. this year. Esteban. That's pretty bad. I don't even know that it was French. I'm not even sure. No. Esteban. What a lovely guy. Yeah. I mean, for a French guy, he does Italian gestures very well just then, didn't he? Did he? <laughs> yeah, hey. he did. What are you doing? He seemed to be, su- yeah, he seemed to be suggesting to you. He recognised you. He did. He, he did. did. That's why he left. <laughs> Mr. Bunn seemed to hold up the number one. He did. He did. It repeatedly. Finger. He was d- determined that you are the number one podcast. <laughs> you are the best podcast in this corner of the paddock. In this area. Right now. In this, what, four metres by four metres? We're it. Yeah. I mean, it's good to have, it's good to be aspirational, especially in this sport. The ultimate meritocracy. No, we will note that we are at the sharp end of the paddock where Mercedes are. We are not. That's true. At the opposite end of the paddock with the tail enders. In fact, there's no one down that end. Just Claire. No, not even tissues. Robert Kubitzer and George Russell no, no, no. there. They've already gone home. Williams. I mean, Sean, it's, uh, it's not good. I said something that I thought was quite humorous on the circuit public address today, which I retrospectively thought, I hope that didn't seem too sarcastic, and I hope I didn't upset them. When Robert Kubitzer brushed the pit wall on the entrance in FP3, I, I, it happened while I was talking in the middle of uh, a point, and then I said, oh, he's just hit the wall. Hopefully that might make the car a bit quicker. <laughs> um, and I thought, well, <laughs> maybe, I, sh- maybe I shouldn't have said that out on the public address yeah. just now. Yeah. Um, I might just walk that Elch. one back. Elch. But, uh, yeah, the gallows humour is creeping in for those of us, me included, who are big fans of Williams. Um, we grew up with Williams. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, I remember Nigel Mansell, the beautiful moustache, yes, the, the g- blue and the yellow jumpsuit. What a what a team! Blue and, and yellow jumpsuit. I think it was a blue. It was a blue and yellow. Jump, Renault. A jumpsuit. Yeah, well, the, 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 you know, the what was he going to an Elton John gig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elton John. I'm pretty was sure he really? was. He could just, he could t- certainly move. He could move. Well, he had a well. fantastic tash. You know, oh, that. that was a beautiful tash. Fastest moustache since Errol Flynn is what Clive James turned it. Very nice. Imagine him in a nice little sombrero. Yeah. But um, yes, Williams in a terrible state right now. Normally, normally they they have good pace in Melbourne. Both cars knocked out in Q1 for the first time ever in Melbourne yeah. for Williams. And it seems like there's um, no way to come back. How can you make up a second and a half? Indeed. I mean, they're well, going to spend the rest of the season trying to make up yeah. half a second. Cash your minds back. Um, they were 1.7. I mean, yesterday in practice, they were 1.7 slower than everybody else. 1.7, coincidentally, was the same margin by which they took pole position uh, in 1997. Oh. Um, although, oh, admittedly, it was Villeneuve over Heintal Frentzen, his own teammate. They were two, Villeneuve was 2.1 quicker than Michael Schumacher. Yeah. 
And now it's gone from ruling the roost by that much to trailing everybody else by that much. It is an absolute shambles. And, yeah. uh, it's, you know, some, something's got to give. Because yeah. uh, this mediocrity has been baked into the cake for a long time at Williams. They can't say that, wow, what a shock. You've gone from, you know, being championship contenders to nothing all of a sudden no it's not no, been like that no. apart from the blip in 2014 and 2015 where there was a big resurgence if you took that out since Montoya won in Brazil in 2004 they've only won one race in in 15 years and you know those back-to-back seasons where they were pretty competitive seem to have yep. masked what is institutionally a team that is no longer competitive so where do they go from here Sean I mean what can they possibly do do they honestly I, mean, you I think something yesterday when we walk in the pit Mm. And you mentioned, can I mention it, that you think that Mercedes might... Well, I, you, that Williams might not see the season eight in the well, format that they're yeah. in. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Mercedes will be involved in that. Oh, okay. uh, you know, it might not be them, but um, I think... Someone's going to have to help out. There's going to be, yeah, something, somebody's got to be a four guy or indeed a four gal. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, it can't go on like this. When you've got people like Paddy Lowe who, and every team Paddy Lowe has been involved with has won stuff. And not just the occasional win either. Big, you know, he's won championships. When you bring in someone like Paddy Lowe, and then he, he's there for a few months, and not only can he not turn it around, but it gets the situation gets worse. I can't assume that Paddy Lowe has magically forgotten everything he's ever known about winning in world championships and, and so on. So if even he can't turn it around, and they've had other good people there, like people like Pat Simmons as well, who've worked on world championship teams, and they've come and gone. Um, if you can't hang on to those staff who are championship winning staff, I mean, I, I, I direct you to the scathing blog that Peter Windsor wrote um, last week about this, the situation at Williams where he was formerly the team manager. Um, it is, you know, it's, it's that he feels in the article, he felt that there are too many people um, at an executive level at Williams who are just not, they just don't understand racing. They're people who understand business. They don't understand the, the business of racing. Um, when you compare it, and the comparison Peter made in the article was with Freddie Vasseur at Cyber slash Alfa Romeo, how he came in at a time where they were back of the grid team, and now you know now they're regularly in Q3 last season. Raikkonen's been competitive all week here. Um, yeah, totally different team. Can we do a whip round for Williams? Oh, a GoFundMe page. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you got in your pockets, boys? I've got, <laughs> I've got, I've got 180 million. I've got Australian on dollars from another country. I've got Australian dollars, which isn't worth much. No. Aussie dollars aren't worth very much. Yeah, I've got 240 million Turkish lira. Yeah, it's not. What's that about? A dollar? Yeah, one pound. And I've also got, you know, I've got 174 trillion Zimbabwean yeah. dollars. It's not looking good. Might Williams. get, might make me, might get me an FP1 drive. There we go. But some encouragement for the other British team, McLaren. Very up. much. Yeah, that young that fella, big. Lando, where did he come from? Yeah, the Under young the fella radar. born 40 days before the Millennium Celebrations. Born more recently than McLaren's last Constructors Championship. Wow. Never know, he has never lived in a world a where McLaren man. have won a world championship as a constructor. Um, and put it eighth on the grid. Um, astonishing. McLaren hadn't even reached Q3 here since 2014. Um, you know, even before they had Honda. So, yeah, at that do we I feel sorry that. for Carlos? Uh, yeah, I mean, he had, he had some problems. I think, uh, was it George? Was it Russell or Kubica? I didn't catch who it was. We had a puncture in Q1. One of the Williams, I forget. I apologize. Um, so Lando someone's... Norris right there. Lando hey, Norris. Hey, there he is. Australian <laughs> podcast. Hey. Fantastic job. Lando Norris as we live and breathe. Lando Norris. Yeah, I'm he's sure. He's little, isn't he? He's he, he is. Yeah, he's on his phone there. How's he's his timing? Yeah, well, he was on his phone downloading the FM1 podcast and just checking to see when it's ready. So he should. If he's, um, if he's in his right mind, he'll download the podcast and he'll have a listen. Um, the size of drivers have changed now. There's a lot of tall drivers around. Pardon me? There's a lot of tall drivers. Are there? I yeah. haven't noticed. Nico Esteban, George Russell's quite tall, Giovinazzi's quite yeah, tall. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's any particular reason why that is. It's just, uh, just luck of the draw. Yeah. Um, you know, Lando's... He's, he's more the short end of the market. Because yeah. um, when I started watching F1, they are all tiny men. Well, I mean, when did you start watching? Mm. Mid-90s? Mid-90s. I mean, Gauhar Berger was strapping six-foot lad. Yeah. Alex Wurtz was as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so there was some tall bloke. Carl Wendlinger was a tall guy. Mm. Um, they, had to, they actually changed the regulations in 1995 uh, to implement a rule that the the... Tub had to fit a driver that was six foot two inches tall. 
Um, because Gerhard Berger, when he joined McLaren in 1990, was being shoehorned into a chassis that was designed for Ayrton Senna, who was a much shorter guy. And he found his, his legs were being scrunched up against the pedals because the pedals, in testing, they could put the pedals beyond the center line of the front axle. But once it became right. ready for racing, it had to be behind the center line. That was a regulation. And that meant Berger was scrunched up in the cockpit. So post, post Imola, after the, the Senna situation, uh, that was one of the rule changes they made. Because Justin Wilson was 6'3", wasn't he? Pardon me? Justin Wilson was 6'3"? He was a tall guy, yeah. yeah. Um, he struggled to fit in that Minardi. Yeah. And yeah, Jaguar. It, 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 it didn't, doesn't help. You know, it's, it's definitely not an advantage being tall. So was Lando the biggest surprise for you in qualif- qualification coming out of all the practice sessions? Yeah, I would say he was because he, he, was, he was tooling around near the back. Yeah. Um, and then to suddenly just leap out of nowhere into eighth on the grid. And for his teammate to not even get out of... Q1. Yeah, and Sainz is a ringer on this track. He's never started lower than ninth here. Scored points on his Grand Prix debut here. He's always been strong on this racetrack. And rule number um, one, you've got to beat your teammate. This, yeah. is, this is a problem for Carlos. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there are mitigating circumstances sure. with Sainz being yeah. knocked out in yeah. Q1. But um, certainly, uh, Lando's done himself a hell of a lot of good today. Um, where I think most thought McLaren, including me, thought McLaren would be sort of fair to middling. Not a disgrace, not an embarrassment, but no. also not setting the world alight. For him to be eighth on the grid is a big, a big plus. Would you give him the big Sean Kelly surprise, positive surprise of the day? Um, yeah, I think I probably would. Um, Who else surprised you in a positive way? Haas. Haas. Haas is Haas's ascendancy starting with FP3 and ke- and consolidating it in qualifying for the second year in a row. They win the quote unquote best of the rest award. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully, Haas have always been strong here. This is a third year in a row. Grosjean started six on the grid. So it's, it wasn't a surprise in terms of the historical, the historical nature of it, but certainly I think most of us thought it was going to be Renault that would be in that role, but Haas decisively took it. Um, now they've got to make sure they can... <laughs> speaking to the Haas people earlier, he said it's not doing one lap that's our problem, it's completing 58 of them. And Roman Grosjean's started here eight times and retired five times. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, getting it around to the chequered flag is, is what will be key. And putting wheels on the car is also beneficial. Yes. We had a theory last year. We had, we had a theory that there was a gentleman called Terry who was in pit lane. And Terry, when there was, a, there was two Haas incidents and then there was Kimi Raikkonen um, in Bahrain, Bahrain yeah. with the, the wheel running over the, um, mm-hmm. the mechanic. We, we thought there was a gentleman called Terry who was going around and not putting wheels on. And then there was another one, Stoffel Van Dorn had one in a practice session and... Um, Perez had one, I think it was in France. I was like, it's Terry again. This is our common denominator, Terry. Is there a pun there? I, I missed that. Is there no, a German I called Terry? No, not really. It's not like really. a boy named Sue, Johnny Cash yeah, or something. No, no? Not, okay. not really. Sorry. I was looking slightly vaguely at you, thinking, I've, I've, I've missed the punchline. <laughs> yeah. Why is the guy called there, Terry? There, there was no punchline. All right. It just enough. seemed like a really Aussie name. Like, maybe there's an Australian pit crew member that Bruce. was just fucking things up. Surely it should be Bruce. Yeah, that's too stereotypical. We did that with Lee Diffie once. I'm sure every Australian knows Lee Diffie. Um, we had Lee Diffie do a QA and a session on Speed Channel in the US. It was for the web. So we thought, well, let's play him up. So we, had, we asked him a question uh, because he was an Aussie, yeah. you know, doing an American thing. And we said, so Bruce from yeah. Australia emails in to say blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, and immediately he was looking suspicious, but he went with it. And the second question was something completely ludicrous. And then we said, that's from a woman called Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching too much Monty Python. That's your problem, Sean. <laughs> oh, Bruce. I don't have any Bruce's, actually. Do you know any Bruce's, Luke? I don't know a single Bruce. Do I know any Bruce's Lee? Bruce. Luke. Bruce. Sorry, I was talking to you. That was a, that was a two, two Australian knockerism. So it was a, I, was a, yeah, I don't know a, a single Other Bruce. Other than Bruce Lee. I don't know besides Bruce Lee. Yeah. Oh, we'll get the Australian anthem. Should we stand? The Australian anthem Probably anthem's should. No, it's okay. You no. stay. It's it's a version I don't really like. No, no. no. It's, it's a version you know, sung by that, you know, version sung by John Farnham. It's, it's a John Farnham version. Yeah, yeah. I'm not very familiar with. Um, another surprise: uh, Sergio slipping into the top ten. Yeah, just he nicked it good. there. I would say Racing Point have had a bit of a, uh, a tough uh, tough winter uh, yeah. because they're still regrouping from the financial situation of last year, and that car has been designed on a, 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 a dodgy budget. Yeah. I mean, the budget's not dodgy now. But they're playing catch yep. up, definitely. Can you now, see them being really strong come mid season, end of season? Really no, I, I could see a situation where they become what they've been in recent times, which is just almost sort of consistent. Best of the rest. Now, yeah, yeah, sort of. They're almost like wallpaper in Formula One, that yeah. team. 
Like, yeah. they never do anything... I say they never do anything spectacular. Of course, they've been on the podium. You know, they were the only team who were on the podium last year, yep. not from the big three. But really, that was only... They only ran the last three laps in Baku in a podium position. It was kind of yep. a steal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they're almost kind of anonymous in so much as... Well, they're there, and they, they just grind out good results, and that's yeah. the end of it. Um, what I think is interesting as a statistician is that Racing Point are adamant that their constructor history began in Belgium last year. We bought the team. Right. Racing Point Force India began in Belgium. Now we're Racing Point. So our history begins in Belgium. Now, I am also equally adamant, based on my lifetime's work, that this is their first Grand Prix. And the reason for that is because... The chassis remained a Force India until the end of the season. And as per the definitions of how we do stats, it's the chassis name that it's, you know, the name that's on the chassis right. is what, where we credit the constructor. Yep. So Racing Point are a new constructor this weekend. Right. Don't let them convince Don't you otherwise. Them, yep. Don't let them fool you. No. And in fact, that very team, that team has a precedent within it of that situation because in 2006 Midland, as they were, were bought by Spiker. So for the rest of the season, they were called Spiker MF1 team. And then in 2007, they became Spiker F1 team. And the car was renamed to a Spiker. But the 26, uh, 20, 2006 numbers still were Midland, you see? Right. Even though they were Spiker MF1. But the car remained Midland. So, yeah, there's a little bit of creative accountancy well, going on with that team. Sean, is frightening. Oh. How much information you can fit into that brain. It's what amazing how little interest my Tinder account gets, considering... Uh, <laughs> how do women not find this attractive? Exactly. I don't understand. No. It's yeah. amazing. Chicks yeah, chick, chick, dig are. the stats. They I mean, do. Well, the they thing. are beginning to. Yes, Digs, they are. With chick, they stick, do. Chicks are, it's finally. Yeah. Finally, we're, we're getting cool. Well, you're getting cool. Yeah. There's nothing cool about Luke and I. Full, full, disclo honest. full disclosure. I am actually. <laughs> yeah. Full disclosure. I am actually married. I haven't got a Tinder profile. No, I right. promise. No, you're no, right. No, but no. I'm not an Ashley Madison either. If you did, it would be very popular. If I did, the stats would be superb. You'd add a bit of sex to the stat. Exactly. What would be the stat you'd use to pick up a bird? What's the one you're just going to blow their socks off and their pants? <laughs> okay. Here it is. <coughs> this is what I'm going to be using okay, to, yes. to get myself a girlfriend. Good evening, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is Statman speaking from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you've been short on a few numbers, bum, you know, bum, you know bum, how bum, us bum. guys can exaggerate? Do, 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 do. 16 years now in this great sport of ours, do, Formula do. 1. I've been putting the anal do, do, into do. analysis. <laughs> Boom, boom, Call me. Boom. <laughs> How could I not? Oh, exactly. Sure. It's, it's a winner. You can't, right. you, can't, you can't fail. Can't fail. What chance has she got? Exactly. Absolutely That's not. how my wife ended up, you know, just falling into my arms. How could you not, how could you not love that? Well, a big finish by uh, John Farnham yeah. back there. Fake John Farnham. Yeah, or maybe, no. it's, maybe it is him. I don't He's know. He's still got it. He's still got it. He's still. Oh, Marcus Ericsson. Uh, oh, Marcus Ericsson over there. Marcus. Where? There he is. Hi. It's a good driver. Yeah. So we called good. Marcus the stayed home Viking. <laughs> and every time you would hear the stayed home Viking, it sounds like this. Oh, I am the stay at home Viking. Yeah. I am stuck on the sofa. I thought you were doing an impression of Kimmy oh, Riken at the start. No, that's this is uh, Kimmy's more like. Uh, hey, what? hey, hey guys, hey, where's the guy? Yeah. Got this fucking Viking out of the way. I, so I tried to have a chat with um, Kimmy today. Nothing. Nothing? No, I, I even tried to... Wow. You I, must, I be, you must feel honoured. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not surprising. I kind of, I kind of approached it thinking there's no way I'm going to get anything from him. But I kind of said, hey, Kimmy, Melbourne. Mm. Do you like it? Like, you know, what, what's the most... Um, you didn't even get What, what do you enjoy doing? Nothing. Looked at me and looked like... With, dis oh, with disdain and kept yeah. walking. Right. I said, thanks, Kimmy. Yeah, you exactly. Nice one. I went golfing with Kimmy once. Did you really? I did. Yeah, in Finland. Yeah, I'm not making this up. That's really? true. Yeah, in 2005 when he was at McLaren, uh, we had a day of golfing, and it was everything you might have expected it to be. It was like a big lads day out. We okay. were away off to the country vodka? club with this, and we had this uh, we had this short bus with like there was like 12 of us. It was me, the rest of the Finnish crew, Finnish F1 crew, because I worked on the Finnish broadcast as well. Kimi, Mikasalo, um, and uh, a couple of Kimi's friends, and. Um, a gargantuan amount of lager. <laughs> there was like crates of lager in this bus. Really? Like not just like a, a, like a six pack. There was like 96 pack. Like two crates wow. of the bloody and stuff. no vodka? No. No, it was all beer. Okay. It was all cough beer. I remember oh, that. That's a and, beer. Yeah. And uh, 
And I remember him driving off the first tee and he hooked it into the rough. And uh, over the course, of, they had the beers going, you know. Yeah. It's all big lads day. Yep. By the sixth green, he was putting the ball out of a bunker. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. By the 18th green, he was playing like Tiger Woods. It was amazing. It was really? like, wow. The drunker the he, he got, the yeah, better he got, got the better he got. That's amazing. Was like, it doesn't surprise me, though. No, and then we were away off to an ice hockey game. And what was funny about that was we come in, and it was like, have you ever seen that show Entourage? Yes. Like, I'm with Kimmy. Yeah, it was yeah. like that. I was like, <laughs> I was like no, one gives, no one gives a crap who I am. I'm with Kimmy. <laughs> I'm with this guy. Yeah. Um, but Kimmy had a beanie on and the sunglasses. And it was, just, it was the week after... Uh, it was a week after Monza in 05. Yep. Um, and we got out of the van. We come into the arena, the, the Helsingin Yahali, as it's known, <laughs> the mecca of ice hockey in, in Helsinki in Finland, um, to watch the big local derby between the FCO and Jokeris, who are the two big teams in the Finnish league. Uh, Kimi comes in, walks in. And because it would have been right after Monza and the next race was um, Brazil, yep. people would have naturally assumed, well, why would Kimi be here? So we were walking in, and all the adults were like, that guy kind of looks like Kimi Raikkonen. And all the kids were like, it's Kimi Raikkonen. But really? none of the, the adults weren't buying it. Like, the, the, the parents, like, they, they were like, Didn't believe it. nah. It no be what what, what he would he here? be doing here? Yeah, why? But all the kids were like, oh, my God, it's Kimi. <laughs> <laughs> so it was crazy. brilliant. Like, the kid, the, all, the, all the adults were like, ah, it's not him. We're not going to no bother him. It's obviously not him. It must be a lookalike. That's crazy. Who ended up uh, winning the game? The golf. Did um, Kimmy or did I you? don't remember. I go? remember. Uh, well, I was caddying. I wasn't playing. Oh, you I was were caddying. Just, I was just tagging along. Right, right. It's just like, yeah, that sounds like a laugh. I'll go yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Um, did he invite you? Or uh, no, it was it was it was because the Finnish TV guys were going. Okay. You know, so it was like, yeah, we're going with Kimmy. Do you want to go? You you well, yeah, shit, I've got yeah. a gap in my schedule. With Kimmy, this is yeah, going to be funny. Why not? This is going to be anecdotal. <laughs> I'll have some stories to tell after this game. Yep, and I did. And Every sure it, got, it got increasingly flatulent. Speaking of stories, can you revisit the Alan Jones story that you told? The former world champion, Alan Jones, yes. that you told us last night. I can't remember what it was. What uh, was it? The Tim Tams. The uh, famous the Australian Tams biscuit. On, the Tim Tams on the front wing. Yes. I might have made that up. I knew it! I <laughs> Alan Jones doing his qualifying lap in Adelaide in 86. With a, in his last Grand Prix with, with Tim Tams Tim on the front wing. We're so gullible. That wasn't a real thing. You got me. Yeah. But imagine if it was. Exactly. How good would that That's be? That's what I mean. I, see, I like to put people in a... I like to give people this idea that there is a utopia out there that we could. But it reach. is possible to qualify with Tim Tams, right? In the we the, don't know as you, as you we don't know if Dan Ricardo had those in the car. Remember, he had to jump out yesterday right. to do a little right. bit of setup changes. Could have been a right. Tim Tam where he didn't want it. Well, do you know the reason why he had to have the setup change no. when he jumped out the seat? You don't know? No, I don't. Oh my God! Wait till you hear this. So apparently, the seat belts had got sort of um, knotted up, and let's say they were giving him an extra octave when he was hitting the brakes. Oh no. <laughs> so we had to come back in and say, look, you need to adjust the seatbelts. Oh. They're, they're making me a little bit, uh, they're, tu- a little they're tuning me up a little bit. Yeah, The voice is getting higher, yeah. things are getting tighter. That happened to Eddie Irvine in a race once, into Lagos 1997. He, lost the, lost the he came into the pits, if you ever watched the video of it, he comes into the pits, he's got the visor up and he's in agony. <laughs> and it's because his freaking bollocks are getting strung up by the seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> but did he stay... True to the stayed course. in the race. Yeah, yeah, stayed, they, they, they redo the belts, yeah. but, but he so stayed those in. Those Brits are much tougher than us Aussies. We uh, he's handle. Irish. Irish. Yes, Sorry, he's my an boy. Awesome. It's okay for you, but don't tell him. No. Don't. Oh, the Irish exactly. do not like being called British. Exactly. Yeah, all. it used to be a joke. Patrick Kilty, a great Northern Ireland comedian, he's in the middle in the middle of the troubles in Northern Ireland, where you get a lot of black humour. He yep. used to say Eddie Irvine would be the only Grand Prix driver to wear a black balaclava when he races, <laughs> um, which <laughs> only a man from Northern Ireland could tell that joke. <laughs> Oh jeez! Uh, have we? Have I just been taken off the air? I think I might. Have I think my credential might be still revoked. working. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, still on. What about? Don't think surprise? that'll go out. Any other surprises? Uh, today's qualification. What have we got? Norris Raikkonen was quite a surprise. Speaking of Raikkonen, well, I don't that think was Raikkonen was that much of a surprise. In, in some senses, it was a surprise he wasn't as quick as I thought he would be. What about his teammate? He's been, he's been pushing That's, Giovinazzi. Yeah. yeah, it's Raikkonen's been really putting Giovinazzi away so far. Um, yeah. You know, he needs to... Uh, he's, he's had a, his finger out. Yeah, he's had a bit of an average weekend, driven out. If he can't beat Raikkonen, he may not last that long. Well, he, he doesn't necessarily have to beat him, but get a bit Speaking closer. Speaking of Kimi Raikkonen... There is the man how himself is, on the how phone. How's the timing tonight? Yep. Are you kidding me? Boah! Yep. Boah! Yeah, there he is. Uh, where's my steering wheel? Hey, Kimi, guys, Kimi Matthias wheel? Raikkonen as we live and breathe. Every time... Have you noticed every time we've mentioned a driver, they've walked past? Literally within 10 seconds of mentioning them. Well, they know I'm here. a driver. Another Mention one. a driver, Lewis Hamilton. Ten seconds. Wait, just give it ten seconds. I don't think the audience. Nah. Are, I don't think the audience are buying this silence. Nah. Okay, that's the only example. That's a poor example. Yeah, no, but that's quite incredible. 
sitting here and they're just drop, walking past. Yep. This is nice. They're this all, is and they're all, they're, they're all saying, look, we'd, we'd love to stop. We'd really love to we stop. Would. And we'd love to talk in detail. And I think Kimmy said in Finnish, love effing one podcast, bit busy right now. I think he's, yeah. Half a bottle of vodka to finish. I think he said perkele. What, what is it? Perkele. Yeah. Is that love effing one podcast? Yes, yes, that's exactly Pro- how it translates. That's exactly how that word translates. I can Correct. tell you. Correct. Yeah, Effie one. I'm very um, impressed. Verstappen did pretty. Came within what uh, one hundredth of a second of getting into the top three. Is that right? I don't have the I don't have the results in front of me. Really I don't remember. Close. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Verstappen um, has never finished higher than he's qualified here. Right. And he's never finished on the podium here. Which bode, those, those stats don't bode well when he's starting fourth on the grid. He's never finished higher than he started. Also didn't bode well when the uh, Red Bull Honda uh, uh, actually conked out coming out of the pits. Did you see it stalled coming out of the pits? Did it? I was r- right above uh, the pits yeah. and I went, oh, this is bad. Oh, I didn't realise it had stopped. I thought he'd just... He'd, no. Because the, the, tur- the turning circle's pretty tight here. And sometimes the car will come out of the pits and realise, okay, you're going to hit the pit wall. You're going to have to push it back and give it another couple yeah. of turns of lock here. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it, Verstappen has actually never run. Not only has he never finished on the podium here, he's never run in a top three position on this track in a Red Bull. He's done one lap ever in the top three, and it was in a Toro Rosso here. Oh, right. Which is astonishing. Yeah. Um, but he is among the most aggressive starters. And, of course, Very with, with this track trending among the lowest or the hardest tracks to overtake on, only Monaco on average is a harder track to pass on than this one. Yep. Five overtakes last year, two in 2017. Yeah. Verstappen will use that legendary aggression of his into turn one. You expect you know him to, to sneak right in there and be contending in the first corner? Uh, I think if, you, if, if the possibility presents itself, he'll be sending it. Half a sniff, he'll yeah. be in there. Yeah, I mean, he made up something like 12 or 13 positions on the first lap last year. So Bottas did very well today, was leading, um, and then just got pipped at the end there but, uh, by Hamilton. That mm. was kind of surprising. I didn't expect Ham- uh, Bottas to be that quick. Yes, I definitely. That's one of those days where the driver leaves his business card and says, okay, not today, but I'm just reminding you I'm still there. Yeah. Uh, and, and definitely Valtteri did that. And it's worth remembering that Mercedes is not the de facto Lewis Hamilton team. You know, in 2016, it was Hamilton Rosberg on the front row. Rosberg won the race. So yeah. Bottas being second is not, you know, it's not automatic that, okay, then Hamilton's going to win and Bottas is going to be the wingman. No. It's not that. Um, and in 2012, yeah. Hamilton was on pole, but, uh, Button was second. Button won the race, his teammate. Yeah. And Hamilton didn't even finish second. He was third in that race. So, yeah, let's not assume that Botas is just window dressing. No, because if, no. if Botas ends up leading the first lap... He'll need to. All bets he, are off. He can't, have, he can't have a take. Speaking of Lewis and Botas. Lewis, Lewis and how's Botas that between 10 Toto. seconds? Yeah. And Toto Wolff. Absolutely. How about that? That is Lewis Hamilton there, the owner now alongside Michael Schumacher and Ayrton Senna of the most poles yep. at a single racetrack in Formula 1 history with his eighth Amazing. pole today. That's quite incredible. And Toto is... They are in full, I can tell you folks, they are in full uh, racer gear, overalls, hats, the lot. They look like they're getting ready to go to the car. They're, they're only missing their crash helmets. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what they are doing, in fact. They look like they're going somewhere to get their it's picture taken. I mean, we could chase after them if you want, but we'd probably they're get chucked out. doing a team photo shoot. They have a new sponsor, and they'll be doing a team photo shoot at 8.30. Oh, I see. This is what's happening right now. Well, that would be explain why they're all dressed up. I'd love to hang out with those guys. It'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, Lewis Hamilton actually um, <laughs> yeah, he came out of the toilet uh, when I was going in the other day. <laughs> so, as I, <laughs> there you go. That's, it. That's, that's the kind of circles I hang in. We use the same pisser. Yeah. Um, Standing next to him in the cubicle. We actually, years back in Malaysia, I'd interviewed him one afternoon. And um, I interviewed Lewis one afternoon, and then I went back to the hotel went onto my floor, and Lewis was on the floor waiting to get into the elevator. Oh. So it was like, oh, I saw you 15 minutes ago <laughs> when I was interviewing you, and it turns out we're on the same floor with each other. How about that? Yeah. George Russell, he is a tall driver. He is a tall and driver. And a really nice guy, really friendly. Had a nice chat yeah, with him. and a very, very quick driver. Very quick. won the GP3 championship and the F2 championship in consecutive years. Did what Charles Leclerc did. Yep. Um, I just hope that the situation at Williams right now doesn't kill his career, um, because yeah. he, he is worth... So, so much more well, than surely that. It there we go. Surely. Finally, somebody recognizes us. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's it. Well, surely it wouldn't ruin his career because if you're in the slowest car, no one's really expecting you to do. As long as you're beating your teammate, surely they'll be okay. Sure, yeah. But uh, there's a the Duke of Hereford there. All right. All right, your Duke Ness. Oh, Duke of Oxford. Oxford. I'm sorry. Duke of Oxford. Wrong, wrong Hereford. Cambridge, my good Duke man. Oxford. Cambridge. <laughs> yes, the Duke what of Oxford. Talking is about boy. <laughs> Cambridge. Yes. The Coxless Four. Well, yeah. I don't know him that well. <laughs> Um, oh, we can't be sure about that. <laughs> Let's move right along, shall we? He walked um, through that turnstile pretty easily. I think it might be a Coxless 4. He sure did. Yeah. 
Very smooth. Uh, yes. So anyway, uh, enough with that. Where were we? Where, where were George we? Russell? This yeah. Is, this, I tell you what, this is a great location. I, yeah, I said podcast. that. The fact, to, to sit here and have everybody coming and going around us. Just a shout out to them. Yeah, and, and completely ignore amazing. our request for an interview. Um, yeah. is, it's, it's one of the great privileges. When you can't life. get an interview, this is the next best thing. Exactly. To shout at them. Yeah. Bot it us. Oi. Oi, bot us. Right, and then he says, Fuck off. Yeah, in Finnish, which in, is... Well, not even that. Or daughter for sure. We should have an aim to try and get Gunther Steiner to tell us to fuck off. That would be, that would be awesome. It'd be like getting Billy Connolly to tell us to fuck off if we get oh. Gunther to do it. <laughs> what is the deal? What's the deal with Gunther's accent? It's got to be the best accent I've ever. It seems like a cross between South African to my ear. Well, I think German he's from the. I think he's from the Italian Tyrol, isn't he? So he's on the border between Italy and, and uh, Austria. So that's why it's Germanic. He, he's. Uh, there was a there was an uh, not to go way off topic here, but there was Please an do. Italian an Italian loser called Armin Zugler, who had the similar sort of thing where he had a Germanic name uh, and Germanic accent, but he's from Italy, right. so he's from that region. I think that's where it comes so from. So they kind of stuffs up the accent when they yeah, and it's because in, in far north of Italy there are some people who speak German as a first language. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. and that can screw up your English. Yeah, although I would say that Gunter's English is far better than my so German good. or my Italian. Did you get a chance to see the Netflix? I have not seen it yet. Yeah. Um, I he stars sure. in that. He really I, does. Yes. He, I, well, I called him the king of Netflix when I saw him the other day. He puts that many f bombs in it. Yeah. You've got to see just for the f bombs. Right. Good to f bombs with his accent. Yeah. He's almost. Oh, oh, oh. He's almost Irish. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Uh, I can't. I can't wait to see it because I know a couple of friends of mine are in it. So I'm sure I'll have a look at yeah. it on the way back. And I know there's a bit of not criticism, but in Formula One insiders, I mean, you are Formula One obsessed. You know everything about it. I just hope you don't look at it and think, okay, it's a bit of a gimmick. Because for people that aren't like my wife, for example, she loves it. She's it's sort of bringing people in that don't normally associate or enjoy Formula One. She she can't stop watching. It's like Desperate Housewives for her now. Yeah, so it's the it's relationship. Something, it's it's the fighting. Hello, Will Buxton. Right at the back, Will Buxton. Look at that. Oh, Will Buxton's Hello. coming over. Hello. Hello. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Very well, thank you. All right, Welcome Will. To the podcast. Right, good. Oh, Effing oh, One podcast. What kind of a podcast it's is this? It's the Effing One, Australia's only dedicated Formula One podcast. Effing One. Amazing. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Australia. <laughs> Hi, Australia. Yeah. Good day. Good that Good accent. Good day, Bruce. <laughs> Why is it Bruce all the time? Hey, I said it was Bruce earlier. Yeah. You're a Monty Python uh, fan, aren't you? In the in the supercar race, mate. It was uh, Bruce. Bruce, who beat Bruce, and then Bruce was behind him. Bob came sixth, and then it was Bruce followed by Bruce and, it, and um. And then Rivers, the, the trophy, was, the trophy <laughs> was pre- the trophy was presented by Sheila. There you go, fair dinkum Onza. and all that. Yeah, that is actually probably the best Aussie accent I've heard. That to be honest, so much. I, I won't. Yes, I. I oh, no, you've broken out of it now. Well, I've gone back into English again. Yeah, I I, I learned Australian um, from staying on Fitzroy Street for quite a few years and getting shouted at by girls as they fell out of bars <laughs> into the street. But I can't repeat what they said. Although it can be used sometimes as a term of endearment in this country. In my country, it's probably the single worst word that you can say. So uh, I won't repeat it. <laughs> yeah, Every, everyone does. Get out of my way, you. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. welcome. To back to Australia, that's how I learned Australia. I think that's how you learn most accents, is if yeah. you can swear in that accent. For example, Liverpudlian accent, Scouse, as it's known. Uh, Sean supports their football team. Thank you. Um, um, the best way to get into speaking Scouse is to start swearing in Scouse. Same with Geordie, same with most accents. If you can swear in an accent, you got it. You, you got it pinned, pretty much. Can you swear in any other language? Uh, yes, French. I'm can quite, you give us some French? I'm quite proficient in swearing at French. Really? Well, because I used to work for GP2 back in the day, and I lived in Switzerland, in the French part of Switzerland. And I would, I had to learn French there. And, and the first they, words you learnt were... Well, actually, no, the first, the first, no, the first words I learned, I actually um, watched car- a lot of Cartoon Network, because it was one of the few channels that you could switch between French, German, Italian and English, which are the official languages in Switzerland. And I loved my cartoons. So I learnt French by watching Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Laboratory in French <laughs> and then switching back to English. Um, so the, the first phrase I learnt was, et comme d'habitude, la journée était sauvée par les Powerpuff Girls, which means that once again the day is saved thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> because, it, because that's how they finish every single episode. Um, and, and it's great because cartoons are, are lots of repetition. I'm going off the point. Um, but the fact that I knew I could speak French was the day that I got into a blazing row with somebody on the phone swore at them and hung up and my friend turned around well my colleague turned around to me at the time and went and now you can speak French um, perfect diction yeah exactly it was like that was pretty good and quite harsh I was like thanks <laughs> 
So yeah, there you go. That's it. Will, thank you for dropping into uh, I everyone. Mean, I, hope, I hope my insight uh, has been helpful. For, Can, for this week. We'll speak to you again very soon. Yeah, thank of you. Course, of course, thanks, thanks guys. Will. Bye. Love your work. There you go. Oh, Will, Will Buxton, the best in the business, that? folks. The best swearer in town. <laughs> in, French. in French, in any language. Yes, indeed. They can swear. In... Wow. Yeah. How was that? That was just out of the blue. <laughs> well, Will and I worked together for a very long time. Ah. Um, yeah, because I actually, I never, <laughs> I never let him forget that I actually, I was the guy who recommended him to Speed Channel. Uh, when he was a GP2 press officer. He was actually, he started doing the World Feed commentary for GP2 in 2009. And what would happen was um, we'd be in the green room getting ready to do a broadcast, an F1 race, so the GP2 race would be on. And we'd hear this guy, proper Murray Walker, pants on fire sort of thing. Oh, and I'd be like, brilliant. I don't know, th like this is a dull race, but whoever's commentating on it makes it sound really exciting. Um, so when Peter Windsor made his uh, ultimately ill-fated decision to leave television to go and do the USF1 project, we needed a new pit lane reporter. And uh, the, usual, the usual names were banded around, and I suggested, well, look, if you listen to Will Buxton, this guy who does the GP2 world feed commentary, he makes it sound so exciting. And he's, and he's young, and, yep. you, know, the dem you know, it's like, instead of the same old, same old, you know, it's bringing, promoting someone new and, and young and a different demographic. Uh, and they went with it. And there's an interesting side note to that. I hope Will doesn't mind me telling this story. Um, <laughs> this is the first time our, our boss at Speed Channel was a, was a, a legend of uh, sports broadcasting on the Eastern Seaboard in the U.S. called Rick Miner. And he's a very imposing guy. He's a big, like, overweight dude, big beard. Um, and he, he actually is the only executive producer that, or executive vice president of any network I've ever worked for who sat in his office wearing a T-shirt that said, Caution, I say fuck a lot. <laughs> um, so... Will Will came in on the first day. I should have had Will tell this story, really. Uh, Will came in on his first day and met with all the brass and everything. Um, and then the last person he had to meet was Rick Miner. And eventually he ended up in Rick Miner's office. Uh, and Will comes in, sits down. And the first thing Rick says to Will is, well, those guys haven't told me you're an asshole, so I guess you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And we were off and running. That was 2010. God. Wow, yeah, you go so, back. Oh, yeah, when we and Will did every single race together from, from when he was hired until the end of the NBC year in, in 2017. We did every race together. What's the... I actually what? stood in for him. I stood, really? Because Will, where, when, when, his, when his child was being born in Malaysia 2010, oh. I stood in as a pit lane guy for him. Wow. Yeah. That story I told you about interviewing Lewis Hamilton and then seeing him in the lift was that race. That's, <laughs> and that's a real story. That's, that's not a the real Tim Tam story. That's that, a real, that, that was a real story. That really happened. Yeah. Actually, same, same weekend, Malaysia 2010, I was in the bar at the Pan Pacific. If anybody's ever been to the Sepang race or went to the Sepang race, um, there's, there's basically the airport, there's the racetrack, and then there's the Pan Pacific Hotel. And there's the only three things, and then there's a swamp for about 20 miles. So everybody's at the Pan Pack. Um, and I was in the bar one night, and um, a load of um, a tourists came over to me and said, excuse me, are you Nico Hulkenberg? Uh, to you? To me, <laughs> yes. And I said, do you want me to be? <laughs> He said, well, I, are you him? I said, I am not. So they, weren't so they, so they went, oh, The accent okay. wasn't a giveaway. Well, I hadn't said anything. Oh, I was just okay. sat at the bar. Oh, sure. Um, so I said no. And they went away and had a bit of a... They conferred. And they said, could we take a picture with you? Because we'd like to tell people that you are Nico no <laughs> So I said, yeah, sure. sure. And they did take a picture with me. So, yeah, I, I'm like fake Nico Hulkenberg. There you go. Yeah. You do kind of look a bit like... I mean, from some angles. Yeah. You do have that little <laughs> bit of... You got that German, you know, they kind well, of Germanic. Well, I haven't got the blonde. I used to have the blonde tips in my hair, so I looked a lot more you got like a Germanic him. look about you. I looked I mean, a lot more like yeah, him. like a tough guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, kind of like yes, a tough. Yes, no guy. one looks tougher than me and Nico Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg is the toughest. We are the most intimidating two people you'll he, ever meet in this paddock. Yeah. Well, he certainly is. Yeah. He, he's a tough looking. Never mind Lewis Hamilton with his dreads and all that. Yeah, no. Stuff going the corn rolls. On. Yeah. Not, not so tough. Never I didn't like the, the corn roll hairdo. I like it more now when it's just sort of yeah. out, out and about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's, uh, you know, but yeah. then now we've got the hairdresser in at Mercedes. Was you know, it's all I, thought I, was, I thought I just saw uh, Dan Ricciardo. I was, I was wrong. It's just one of the other dudes. The honey badger's about to descend. Yeah. I was expecting. He will come out. You, Who do you reckon's yeah. got the best food in the, in their little... Have you seen the little food areas? They're in, mm -hmm. They could bring their own chefs over. Yeah. The Italian guys, Ferrari guys bring their own chefs. The Renault guys bring the guys from Italy, uh, from France. It'd be, it'd be close between Renault and Ferrari, surely. I don't, I've never Williams wouldn't be that great. They're probably skimping back. In backwards. the role that I'm in, I just kind of duck in and stuff my face and can then leave. Can you just go and eat from those? You can just. Well, you can't just, you can't just sort of walk in. Like when when the mechanics are getting lunch, like you don't go in. Well, how um, do you how do you invite yourself? Just go. Well, usually, uh, do you say, uh, "I'm Nico Hulkenberg." Yeah, just, right. Exactly. Yeah, can, can At Renault. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like, yeah. No, you're in the car Nico, in five wait. minutes. What? Yeah, he's it's Nico. Let him. Let right, him eat. Yeah, exactly. he's hungry. No, yeah, I should try that actually. 
It's a shame the Malaysian Grand Prix is not still on the calendar. There we go. Um, no, I mean, there's an etiquette about it. You know, they, they, uh, so, you know they'll, they'll put on breakfast at a certain time for the journalists and so on. It'll say in the, in the rundown, you know, ah. you come in at this hour. Be but generally s- speaking, anybody can walk into the hospitality area and get a drink or maybe a little snack. Because you know, I get coffee up. from the Ferrari area, but I'm not game enough to go over that little step and into inside. And yes. There's a, there's a Bay Marie. It's like within touching distance. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I mean, oh my there's, God, a, there's a certain... There's probably tiramisu in there. Yeah, there's like, a cer- there is a certain etiquette. Like, don't go into this bit. And, you know, if it says team only, please respect it. Don't just do, go in. It's kind of like a signal. One of the guys has to go, okay, you could go. Well, sure. I think it's, it's, it's like anything in so much as that if they, people know who you are, like you, you're, you, we know you. you're, we know you're friendly. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Can I be your plus one tomorrow? Me in in the Ferrari. Yeah. Uh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I um, could be Dan Ricardo. If you, if you, you like, you be Hockenberg. I'll be Dan. I don't think anyone's going to confuse you for Daniel Ricardo. <laughs> A swollen Dan Ricardo. I'm swollen. Like you've had some kind of reaction to because, to peanuts. Yeah. No, I'd say I'd say a swollen Dan Ricardo. Like you've had a reaction to a very tight seatbelt. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure what my excuse is because even I mean I'm I'm a triathlete and even I'm fatter than a Formula One driver, which pains me because I'd like to be reasonably fit. But I mean I'm, even Formula One drivers are way fitter than me. So I don't know what what uh, made you think of becoming a triathlete. That's the the hardest thing you could ever do. It just seems like such a tricky thing to do. Well, without we're drifting from the we're drifting the topic at hand. But in we short, in short, I couldn't swim. I would. I didn't like. I kept injuring myself riding on a bike because it would pull. I pull muscles on my leg, and I hated running. So it was three things I couldn't or or wouldn't do. So I wanted to run the rule over that and say yes, I can do it. That's all in one motivated. go, and just tick them all off at the yeah. one time. And then I became. Clever. I went from being a non-swimmer and a non-triathlete and a non-runner, and I hadn't ridden a bike in ten years. But in January of 2013, and by December 2013, it was an Ironman. So wow. I'm now a three-time Ironman. So yeah, that's, that's why amazing. You, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank that you. is cool. I don't yeah, think going I for, can... trying to go for fourth. And you've got kids. Year. I have, yeah. I mean, that, that you are allowed kids if you're an Ironman. It's, you are allowed them. <laughs> Can you explain what entails for an Ironman for our listeners? Uh, an Ironman is a... Uh, sorry, I'm going to use the imperial measurements. I'm sorry. It's like a 2.4-mile swim, so I think 3.8 kilometers. Okay. 180k yep. bike, 112 miles. Yep. And then you use kilometers? Uh, no, no not okay. in the US and not in the UK. Um, and then run a marathon, so 26.2 miles, whatever that converts as, um, or one after the other. So, yeah, it takes us... It's an all-day event. It takes, very takes a long time. Very impressive. We digress. Let's get back onto Formula One at hand mm. before we go get some pizza. We're going to go to St. Kilda to grab some Toto pizza. Apparently, that's the best pizza in, uh, in Melbourne, down to St. Kilda. Who are we to disagree? Well, that's all right. We haven't tried it. No. Uh, and you being Nico Hockenberg, you've never tried it either. Fake Nico Fake. Nico. Me being fake Dan. Well, actually, he's fake Sean Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> Finally. Finally, someone said it. Uh, tomorrow, the race, mm. your tip how do you see the race unfolding and who's going to win? Well, I hope there's a certain element of chaos theory. Because on an even keel, this is a slam dunk for Lewis Hamilton. Um, I can't see it going any other way. Because if it, it's very difficult to pass on this racetrack. And Hamilton's obviously in pole position. He's got his teammate alongside him. So you would assume if they fall in line in that manner, that Botas is not going to give him a hard time on the racetrack. You know, it might fall to hope Botas on a botched pit stop or something like that. But even then, that's the chaos theory that I'm talking about. I hope we get something that we normally get in Australia. Safety car, something weird happens, something unorthodox, unexpected. And then it starts to shake the order up somewhat. 2002? Um, I hope we don't have a repeat of 2002 when we had, what, 12 cars out. Not 12 cars, 10 cars, I think, something like that. Maybe cars. not even that many. I can't remember how many it was. It was like seven, seven. A lot of cars went out finish. at the first corner of the race. Yeah. Um, when Ralph Schumacher piggybacked Rubens Barrichello. I uh, didn't know he loved him that much. My first ever Grand Prix I attended. Is that right? Yeah. It's a hell of a start. Mark Webber's yeah. debut. Wow. Yep. It was. Yeah. Um, and, there, and there was that, what, that girl, um, Kelly, some, I can't remember her name. The most, she was the most Google searched woman in the world at the time. And she was on the Minardi team that weekend. And the day, the day Weber finished fifth. Sorry, it's nothing to do with the racing. It's just the kind of thing that sticks in my mind. We've got Jacques Villeneuve walking past. G'day, Jacques. How you going, mate? Hey, what's up? There we go. He even, he even responded. Good man. Good man, him, good man himself. He's a big listener. Yep. Yeah, he probably he must have been listening. He must have been listening. And he heard when I said he took pole by 1.7 seconds. So he knew I was... He was yeah, one point, that's a big gap. Pole by 1.7 over his own teammate, Heinz yeah. Alfredson. 2.1 2. 1 1. over Schumacher. Um, big, 
incredible. humongous margin. It's a yes. massive gap in Formula One. Yeah, but think about this. I mean, in all seriousness, you would look at if you if you are qualifying Melbourne 1997 after that result, you would think, well, just give him the championship now. Now, yes, he did win that championship, but of course, it went down to the last round. Harris Schumacher doing the, the the deliberate move. You wouldn't have known it would be such a close championship based on that one day, yeah. and that's the day we are at now. So right now, you're like Han Hamilton, the championship is over, mm. but. It was the same here last year. Yeah. And by mid-season, Vettel was in the lead of the championship. Yeah. You know, So it, it yeah. doesn't. this track is not indicative of ultimate pace across the season. Yes, no. Mercedes tend to own qualifying here, particularly Lewis Hamilton. But let's not use it as a litmus test of the whole year. Yeah. Don't get downbeat, everyone. It's a long season, 21 races. Yeah, and we haven't even run the race yet. At the no. moment, everybody's tied for the championship lead. Even George Russell's tied for the championship yeah. lead. So, you know... It, 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 anything on can happen. On back, George Russell, he's the newest in, so uh, oh. he'd be the uh, first one to get the championship. Congratulations, George Russell. It's yours. At the moment, it's yours. Well, Sean, uh, I think we've probably taken up a lot of your time. Hope you haven't minded having a chat with us. Not at all. It's been fun trying. Could to we do this again? Yeah, sure. It's been really? fun. It's been fun trying to just tr- trip people over and get our like, uh, like our, our vaudeville stick, yeah. trying to yank them off, yeah. like bring them it's over been, here. Yeah. Not not one single person has come over though. Will did. Okay, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, because he must have, he must have, he probably want to come over and deny everything. And uh, Will Buxton, bugger, Will Buxton has taken the forklift, everybody, and yeah, he's going Will for Buxton the paddock is, gates. Oh, he's coming this way. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> he drives like a yeah, maniac. Yeah. He drives, he drives by braille. He hits everything and just figures his way out as he goes. Yeah, that's yeah. It's always better to be lucky than good. Uh, uh, there we go, folks. Sean Kelly, uh, thank you. Pleasure, and sir. The Human Encyclopedia of Formula One. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us on F1 Podcast. And Thanks can we speak to you an, uh, another time soon? I'm sure, absolutely. Yeah, it's been good fun. I think we should uh, we should really do this every night at the Australian Grand oh, Prix from now on. Oh. I'm gonna have, I tell you what, I, I'll be meeting with Andrew Westcott tomorrow. The oh, yes, tell C- us about yes, that. The CEO of the Australian Grand go. Prix Corporation. And one yeah. of the things I will say is it should be the law that F1 Podcast should set up in this corner at the end of every night where we do review of the day at Albert Park. You are welcome, my friend. Brilliant. Friends. Is this the suggestion you're going to take to him? I will take it to him. We're going to have a serious... Me and him are we, going to have a serious stat-off tomorrow. We have a bag full of ideas that were rejected by Liberty Media to make Formula One great. Mm-hmm. We'd like to give them to you to hand to him, okay. if that's okay. Sure. And I'll a bag full of Tim Tams. And a bag full of Tim Tams. Well, that's how I'll, that's how I'll get him warmed up. Yeah. Yep. Ted Kravitz. Ted Kravitz. Ted Kravitz is here. Look, it really is Ted Kravitz. Everyone podcast. Hey. Australia's only dedicated fun podcast. Absolute legend. Are we, are we recording? Yeah, we're on. yeah, yeah. Are you allowed, are you allowed to say anything? Okay, okay. pizza. We'll get pizza at Toto's. Ted's late. Okay. <laughs> so, you, sorry. Yes. Okay. You ain't Cut, seen me, yes. Roy. Cut you ain't seen Ted's me. not here. Ted Kravitz is not here. <laughs> Ted who? Yes. Ted who? That was Karen Chandock. Sorry? Yes. That Karen Chandock. No, that was Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was Nico Hulkenberg. Yeah, it was, he was just dressed as Ted Kravitz uh, is what it was. Yeah. Sorry, I, I confused him. It's easy. It's easily done. They sure are. Um, great. Okay. Well, shall we wrap this up? Yes, Go get not? some food. Sounds bloody good to me. Probably should. The batch oh, is probably we, running out. Before eight. we go, who's your tip for tomorrow? <sighs> if I'm a betting man, you mean? Botus. If I was to put down really? money, Botus. Really? Because you get crap odds on Hamilton. Yeah, but Botus' pace was impressive today. As I said, he left his business card with Hamilton today and just reminded him, this is a two-car team, not mm. a one-car team. Mm. I'm still here. And he has, he's spoken over the winter about how um, before we had the, the change to the weight regs, he was feeling nauseous in, in preseason testing and everything like that. Didn't yep. have that this preseason. So I think he, he's, he's a lot sunnier of demeanor yep. this year. Uh, and he could, if, if someone's going to spring a surprise in a race, like if there isn't anything really ridiculous that happens, He's going to be the guy to do it because yep. he's in the same car as Lewis. Yep. What does your heart say? Who do you want to see to win tomorrow? What does my heart yeah, say? Yeah, what does your heart say? I'd love say? Daniel Ricciardo to win. But really? Yeah, but my... I would love I'm Daniel five! Yeah. I but, like... Well, that, was a weird, that was a weird... The high five went into like a hand thing. Yeah. With a, <laughs> with like, a magic handshake. And yet we're still heterosexual. Still we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's a couple of consenting um, men just being having... Very, he- very heterosexual. With weird yes. high fives. Yeah. Um, That's not awkward at all. No, but Daniel Ricciardo... I, <laughs> I would love Daniel Ricciardo to get a great result. Yeah. You know... Um, do you like him? I mean, as a character, 
Yeah, I mean, he's fantastic. We need more characters in Formula exactly. One. Exactly, he's a character. There and were so it, many boring guys in Formula One. There was exactly. I mean, and the same. The accusation is leveled at Lewis Hamilton that he's very pretentious or aloof or whatever. But he is a character, and that yeah. is that is something great, and it brings something unique to the sport in terms of his reach across global media. You, you know, he's hanging out with Kanye West and all this lot. Like that's not something that happens to Grand Prix drivers normally. So he's he's breaking the fourth wall there and going into a completely different audience. And the same with Daniel Ricciardo. Now you might say, I always joke with. The, the female fans like hey, so hands up who likes Daniel Ricciardo and every hand goes up I'm like yeah of course I always say you know my wife has a release clause in our marriage that she can go and marry him <laughs> if he becomes available but I've also said I've also got the same release clause if he comes available to me um, yeah but yeah but he is a great character and it's it's a fantastic um, uh, yeah the, the fact that we're, uh, Will would love it if Shane Will is, isn't here to tell the story in Abu Dhabi last year sorry I know we're supposed to be wrapping up I'll tell another story um, in Abu Dhabi last year people won't know this unless you were at the track and you heard it the first time it went out. Post-qualifying, he did an interview with Will, and Will was leaning on the barrier, as you do, getting ready to do the interview, and Daniel Ricciardo comes over, and he puts his hand on the barrier right in front of Will. Now think about the height of the barrier, and then Ricardo sort of sort of jumps back a little bit startled and he goes, oh, sorry, mate, nearly, nearly flicked your helmet there. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the mic was open. The mic was, and it went out on the circuit public address. <laughs> and conspicuously, it found its way out of the edit. If you go and watch the, the YouTube edit of what that says, it's not in that. You had to be at the track to hear it. That's great. Should there be a personality test as part of the super license? <laughs> well, it's getting into a different debate at that point, isn't it? But, but I think the, the Netflix thing, like you mentioned, you know, it, it brings out characters. It makes you care about people. Um, and it's something that's been sorely lacking in Formula One because it's so insular. But the fact about it is um, we didn't mention Charlie Whiting this week. And I should say, you know, yes. it, obviously there is, there's, there's a cloud over us because yep. we lost Charlie Whiting this yep. week, who's been race director since 97. Most of us who work in Formula One don't know a Formula One without him as the, as the referee, as, as, if you will. But... Uh, Jake Humphrey told a great story of um, uh, when he worked the first day at the BBC, he came in here and Charlie Whiting interviewed, introduced himself and he, he said, look, don't worry, the paddock seems a very intimidating pace and it's an extremely, extremely competitive environment. Everybody's up to here to one-up everybody else in all we do. But ultimately, it is a great big family. We all travel together, we all know each other, you know, and we have pro you know, problems in life that you know, extend outside of the, the paddock gates. So... Yes, it's very competitive and intimidating at first, but there are characters in here and you'll make friends and it, you know, it will become like family to you. And that, that exists within Formula One. And the problem is, is getting that out there into the, you know, out yeah. into the stands and beyond. You know, the, that, those personalities do exist and everybody is inherently likable. Um, you know, and, and there are a lot of uh, people who are inherently As unlikable. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you yeah, know, yeah. but, you know, just like in any yeah. other fraternity. Yeah. Uh, so it's great if Netflix are doing things like that where it, it allows us to, to tell those stories because I know lots of people in there and I think oh great this guy's here or this person's here I can't wait you'll come in brilliant I can't wait to see you uh, you know yep. it's, it's just like that you know yep. Nico Hulkenberg uh, Nico, we're just talking about Nico you Nico Hulkenberg that's the real guy Australia's that. Australian, Australian podcast <laughs> good yeah because you had qualified job. the teammate <laughs> well yeah. how, how about that yeah it's, it's amazing how I thought that, that was me it looks like I was going to go over. To, I was going to go over to him and say are you yeah. stat man can I take yeah. my photograph with you someone walked past with a mirror and Sean just got dead still he just stared at it going oh, look at that handsome yeah. devil what's no, going it's on there Nico Hulkenberg. What's, he, what's he jumping in what sort of car is he jumping in there it's a, obviously it's a Renault <laughs> it's not a Citroen <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a white hatchback that's quite nice it is he's not driving it's not quite an Aston Martin but it's not exactly. he's not driving he See, is not Kimmy, driving he he always drives yeah he, he makes sure of it yeah because he doesn't want Michael Schumacher used to drive himself in because he didn't want um, somebody to try and impress him with their driving yeah. skills, yeah. Because he would be always like, "Look, yeah, right. This person is obviously an idiot. Yeah, you know. Um, I don't. I'm not going to be <laughs> yeah. impressed. Yeah. So don't even no. bother. No. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I understand why drivers would do that. Well, Sean Kelly, again, wrapping up again. It's always so, wonderful. So nice to meet you, and thank you so much for joining us on FM1 Podcast. Let's pleasure. do this again. Yeah, it has been an Good unexpected times. hit this, this evening. Let's do uh, this. Here we got another. Max there is Max Verstappen on the Australian way. Australian Podcast. Thanks for being, thank you for being Great a, job. Thanks for being a guest on the show for five seconds Jeez. there as you walked past. Got a big thumbs up. Yep, nice got a big one. Thumbs up. I feel like we and should keep. I feel like we shouldn't end this because every time we, should, we until Daniel Ricciardo walks. Every out, time we end up wrapping up. Well, if we do an edit point. 
we'll right. just pick it. Well, right, we'll do an edit point. Yeah. But yeah. This <laughs> right, well, you might have a real yeah. problem with this one. Every time um, we wrap up, we'll just cut out that part. We're just going to keep going until right. everyone That's going to be the payoff. Dan Ricardo's going to walk until out and end up being a guest on yeah. this podcast. Until every bin is emptied, every caterer has left. Yes. We are going to stay here and continue to podcast. I can confirm. I'm looking at the Rolex clock, and it yep. is one minute to nine o'clock. Ah, oh, that's Dan's time, isn't it? That's when he likes to kick off. And it's Dan time. A nice little yeah, da- downtime. Time, no, it's time for Dan time. It's Dan time. Yep. Dangerous Dan. Dan. He hasn't come through here yet. It's, you know what's for me, this is my first time in this area, in the Formula 1 paddock, is just to watch things evolve, mm-hmm. just to watch things happen throughout the day. Different energy in the morning, and then it just slowly changes, and you just watch. It's very organic, the, isn't it? It's just, just watching is yeah. really, really amazing. It's organic, and you get changing demographics at changing times of the day. My favorite time to be in the pit lane is uh, at sunset, because usually all the hangers-on have drifted off, gone off to something else. And you're just left with the mechanics and the cars, yeah. and the garages are going because they've got their music on because yeah. there's no one here to impress. You, know, you don't have to keep up appearances, right? And uh, you're just left with the cars, and you're just like, oh, and there we go, they've oh, just fired an engine. Well, last night the Red Bull guys had some some nice sweet beats happening. Yeah, they, they did. That happens every night. Yeah, yeah, and next door the Renault garage didn't have the well, they were listening to the Marseille, Red Bull or they were listening. <laughs> Clever. Yeah. Clever. There goes um, some. Now, Red Bull uh, guys now. There's the pit crew. These, I think they're working on the uh, Max's car. I think those guys. Yeah, they've all got. To, uh, they've all got to be out by a certain time. I don't know what the curfew point yeah. is. There he is, the GP2 champ. See you. <laughs> <laughs> right. This man, is just man awesome. He is uh, unbelievable. He's uh, the greatest Italian commentator in, in English. <laughs> yeah, you ever heard that joke? How do you gag in Italian? You tie his hands behind his back. <laughs> The What's sound you are hearing in the background the is a, that is a three-liter V10 engine in the back of the Minardi two-seater. Sounds like they're warm. They're draining the oil out, yeah. something like that. Um, right. Yeah, that's it. Mercedes Benz, maybe. This is the time that they would be undercover. All the cars would be in Park Ferme. They can't touch the cars. Uh, the time yeah, that I think they, they once they're back in the garages, they'll 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 put them to bed, as they say, and then that's it until tomorrow morning. They can't. They they can. They can do minimal things. There are certain things they can do. Um, they can talk to it. They can talk to it. They can sing its songs. Yep. They could bring a psychic in. A, you know, a, 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 what is it? A faith healer. That kind of stuff. <laughs> a shaman. Which if I was at, which I, if, which I if I was at Williams right now, I'd really give that a try. <laughs> Consider you think about it. Lewis is the only one who's a devout Christian. Do you think that's the reason why he's winning all these titles? What? Because if he wasn't devout. If everyone else turned to Christianity and was a devout yeah. Christian, would, would would that change the tables? Would more people start to win championships? Are you saying that he has you've, either be, you've either got to be I'm devout saying. Christian or racing for Christian Horner? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, that, I can't answer. That's above my pay grade. Yeah, well, but if that was the case, why didn't Christian Danner win a Grand Prix? <laughs> Some say that Christian Horner is more powerful than the other Christ. <laughs> I fear we're drifting away from this the topic at hand here. Are we still? Are we just talking? Just are waiting for Dan. Air? Are we just talking until just Dan wait. turns up? I think we are. I think. <laughs> I think you, like yeah, you've got a lot of editing to do tonight. Oh boy, like. it's gonna be a long. We're just you know cut it in half in quarters. Right. This might might cut it right back. Right back. This is such a good spot. Can we do this tomorrow night at the same spot? We'll give Will it a go. Really? I would say that tomorrow night they'll be tearing all this up. Um, so we'll be what? in the middle of uh, really. Yeah, as soon as as soon as the check and flag drops, they start packing everything up. In fact, even before that, the gates go away. You can see here the gates um, that you can hear bit bit bit. They're gone they're in the gone. middle of the race. Yeah, once the race starts, they take the gates away. So that even those are gone uh, by the time the check and flag falls, and then all the forklift drops just come and go just constantly. It's just they can't get out of here quick enough. Wow. Well, I mean, we could still podcast if they. We could still up, do we it. Still we could still do it, but we won't have the quaintness of all these this plant. Well, life we could be on the shoulders of you know some very muscular mo- removalists. And we could be like uh, Egyptian princes just yeah. through the Sea of Galilee or something. It's a thought. Uh, Podcasting on, <laughs> Maybe we'll explore on the shoulders tomorrow night. of giants. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's been fun. Yeah. You want to wrap this name? I Let's do it. we probably should. Yeah. I don't think he's coming. Johnny Herbert. Oh, Johnny wait a minute. Herbert. I'm getting him. The John. Great man, Johnny Herbert's here. Johnny Herbert. There he is. On his motorized scooter. He's, that is bloody awesome, that thing. Look at that. He is off and running again. That is again. fantastic. That's it. He's on his motorized oh, scooter. Yeah. Full and he's hitting and the he's gas. He's full throttle. 
That is a fully electric, motorised. That's brilliant. All right, should right. we wrap up for the 10th time? Let's get out of Sean here. Kelly, we're off to get pizza. Thank you so much for joining us on FM1 Podcast. It's been Pleasure absolutely up. awesome. See you tomorrow. Hopefully. He's, gonna, you're never, he's not going to come back. <laughs> hi, Mum. Can you, can you say hi to Luke's mum? Yeah, I want to say hi to Luke's mum, by the way. And uh, also hello to Jason Isaacs.